Hi, everybody. My name is Kate Haley. I'm with Glazer's Camera here in Seattle, Washington. And today we have an awesome Q&A session on the new Nikon Z5 with Mark Cruz. So Mark, could you tell us a little bit about you and your role at Nikon before we get that Q&A going? Yeah, uh, my role is a really fun role. I'm a senior product manager here at Nikon USA. And uh, luckily for me, I get to play with a lot of the new toys and uh, launch, uh, be involved in the launching of these uh, amazing products. Uh, my role is looking after the uh, interchangeable camera lens division. So everything from DSLRs as well as our new Z series mirrorless lineup. So that's what I'm here to talk about today, our, our newest addition to the Z series. That's fantastic. Um, it's great to meet you as well. I've met a lot of people at Nikon over the years and I'm surprised we haven't met before, but it's great to meet you today. And I'm looking forward to this conversation. Obviously I did a little reading and research before uh, we planned this and put together a few questions. So we're gonna pick your brain a little bit and have you tell us about the awesome features on this new camera. With that said, you know, if someone's new to Nikon or maybe they've been shooting Nikon for a while and have been thinking about getting a second body or a new body, could you tell us some of the top, like what are the hot features on this new camera? What do people really wanna know about? Yeah, uh, well, let's take uh, your scenario. First of all, if somebody's looking to get into, I would say, full frame now in the year 2020, what are their options? And usually people are very price conscious. So that's one of the first things that they look at. Uh, what we wanted to do with the Z5 is really address that customer base that for whatever reason may have balked at getting full frame in the past, be it the price point or the size. Price point is usually around exceeding $2,000 for the body. Uh, and there's always a size and weight that comes along with uh, the lenses involved in full frame. And we believe we've really conquered that now with the Z5 uh, because of the price point, but also because of the small lightweight size that our mirrorless Z format provides. Uh, if you're looking at the camera right now, this is uh, uh, the full frame Z5 here. You see it's very compact. It has a brand new 24 to 50 millimeter lens that we're kidding with this body, um, but this has all the 2020 specifications now, the ISO that goes up to 51,200. Uh, this camera has dual card slots for this price point. This camera has built-in image stabilization, which is very important for people that are handheld shooting, both for stills and video. It comes jam-packed with so many features, uh, as well as high-end autofocus, our best autofocus system that we've released um, that mirrors the Z6, which includes our face as well as eye detect autofocus that we've sort of uh, maximized now in the firmware version 3.0 of the Z6 is now inherited in the Z5. So a lot of these um, high-end features are in the Z5, but at an entry-level price point. Um, and we'll get into some of those as we get along, but definitely a, a, a camera that people should look at if they're looking at full frame right now, this, this year, present day. Yeah, I mean, so let's talk a little bit about the autofocus. Um, it's got 273 autofocus points, which is a ton. That gives you a lot of coverage over the area. You said that covers eye and animal eye autofocus. Was that correct? Did I hear that right? Yeah, that's correct. I mean, first of all, let's talk about the utility of having that. I mean, people that are watching this are gonna look at specs online. There's, you know, 273, 400, 100, et cetera. What's really the utility? Well, let's talk about your customers that are coming from say a DSLR system. First of all, they are probably accustomed to a cluster of focus points that are directly in the center of the frame. And I think you mentioned before that you're a portrait photographer. Uh, a lot of times if you wanna do composition of rule of thirds or just creative composition off to the side of the frame, it's really difficult with a DSLR based on where the focus points are laid out. With the 273 point array, what you're getting is 90% coverage. So that gives you freedom of composition. Um, the fact that these autofocus points now in a mirrorless camera are actually on the sensor itself means that we can have different focusing methods. And one of those, as I mentioned, is face as well as eye detect. So usually when you're a portrait photographer, you wanna center your focus on the eye. This has an extraordinary feature that does that, that, that you can freely compose throughout that frame wherever you want. And you don't have to drag the single point and kind of line it up with the eye, which is very cumbersome at times, time consuming, and sometimes you miss. So this works in conjunction with continuous autofocus. Um, and you can use both face as well as eye detect 
uh, for pets as well as uh, domestic pets as, as well as humans as well. Um, for video, we support face detect um, for the video function. Okay. So this could be a great camera for the mom or the family photographer out there who's capturing those day-to-day -day shots of the kids running around or the pets running around. Um, this could also be great for maybe someone who's getting into doing a little bit of video too, and we'll talk about that more in a moment. Um, but based on those things, yeah, I do a lot of portraits, but I can see using those features in other ways as well. Having that great screen coverage gives you the possibility of just kind of rolling that point to wherever your subject is, whether it's a person or a landscape or whatnot. So definitely does give you a better range and a stronger range for sure. And I want to hit on a couple of points that you mentioned right there, uh, especially because when you're talking about uh, moving points around, uh, the ergonomics on this are very similar to or is essentially the same as the Z6. So at the back of the camera, we have a, a joystick button right here. So you can uh, freely move your, your focus points around if you choose to use single point or, or the large uh, focus points that we have. I also wanna mention that you, you, you talked about uh, maybe more entry level people that are looking into getting this camera. Because of the price point, I think I would consider a lot of people now maybe even bypassing the crop sensor format and going directly to full frame. People that might not have a lot of experience in photography um, the Z5 has a fully automatic setting. So essentially you can use this as a glorified point and shoot, uh, but grow into the camera as your skills improve throughout time. You have all these built-in features on the camera that are very high end, whether it be time-lapse, focus shift shooting, which people know is focus stacking, um, and uh, a whole a slew of other built-in features as well. Well, and that, I mean, you make a great point there because we all kind of want to start somewhere, you know, a lot of us spend a lot of time using our phones for a camera. Um, but a lot of people, the more into it they get, the more they want to upgrade and get something nicer that gives them more control and more feature sets. But then they get it and they're like, okay, now what do I do? So starting in some of those auto settings and then building out as you learn the camera more and get an, a better, deeper understanding of photography in general, um, it definitely sounds like a camera you could kind of grow into, as you said. Um, I'm also curious kind of with that thought in mind is, you know, there's going to be people who are already using Nikon. There's people who have already invested in a Z6 or a Z7. Would the Z5 maybe be a good backup or a second body for days when you want to travel slightly lighter? Um, the form factor is very similar or basically the same as the Z6. It's just some of the insides are a little bit different. Maybe we can talk about that a little. Yeah, your uh, assessment there is bang on. If people are an existing Z6 or Z7 customer and they're looking for a second body, but uh, maybe something uh, at a, a more attractive price point, a lot of people are going to wonder online when they're doing the research, what are they losing when they go to the Z5? And I'm going to tell you, not much. Um, there are a few video, higher end video features such as if you're shooting full frame 4K, that's really uh, an option that's kind of uh, starts at the Z6 with this Z5. You know, I'm skipping between stills and video, but I'll talk about the video features because that's really the differentiating points uh, between the Z5 and Z6. The 4K on this Z5 has a 1.7 times crop. So you really have to think about your composition at that point. But if you're looking for, you know, just kind of like a second B camera, you have a, a zoom lens on it definitely a Z5 is there. If you're a stills photographer and you need a camera, maybe for a second shooter or even for yourself as a second body, this mirrors the resolution of a Z6. So it's both 24 megapixels. Your workflow will be the same. Your interface is the same. You pick up the camera. It is essentially the same. The only ergonomic difference is the mode dial has been moved from this side on the Z6 over to this side. We've removed one of the uh, display panels, but that is it. The footprint is actually the same, so much so that it uses the same battery. It uses the same uh, battery pack. If you get the MBN10 battery pack um, and all the controls are the same. Even if you're moving from a DSLR, um, you will notice that the, the root menu system and user interface is consistent with DSLRs. What's exclusive on the Z system is a customized user interface that'll actually allow you to program your favorite 12 positions on what we call the I menu. And that's uh, exclusive to the Z system. Now you also mentioned people that are using F mount cameras and F mount lenses. If you wanna repurpose those F mount lenses onto this system, the Z system, the mirrorless system, all you need to get is something called an FTZ adapter. And that will allow you to utilize all your F mount lenses on this 
with the difference that you now have vibration reduction coming from the body. So what that means is if you have an old lens that didn't have vibration reduction, you will actually inherit it from the camera body. That's key, especially at this price point, the, the fact that it does have the image stabilization built into the body. Well, let's talk about that a little bit. So a lot of cameras in that range might not have five axis in camera embodied image stabilization. Um, and I, I know where I could see that feature coming in handy for people. And there's a lot of people who like to do vlogs and they're out wandering around. So the IBIS could be helpful for that. Um, maybe people who are doing mostly still, but getting into video, there's another application. I've done some still photography handheld with IBIS built in on those cameras and done one to three or four or five second exposures where I'm getting like some crisp elements, but then some movement. Um, you know, are those the kind of customers that you see exploring getting this model? Um, because I just feel like for the price point, and again, we're gonna talk about that in a little bit, um, to have five access IBIS is pretty amazing. Well, let's start off with photographers. The IBIS is a game changer for photographers. If you're coming from a DSLR format, you know that the feature of VR or stabilization is really attached to the lens at that point. Here it is part of the body. And in combination with Z lenses, you can get up to five axis, uh, sorry, five axis and up to five stops of stabilization. That's different from a DSLR system where you only had really two axis. Um, you can take existing F mount lenses, adapt it to here and get three axis of stabilization. But um, that's definitely a game changer for still photographers, as you mentioned. I think it will uh, allow them to shoot in places that they might not have attempted in the past if they didn't have a tripod, uh, shooting at slower shutter speeds or uh, more closed apertures with the slower shutter speeds that'll allow them to do that. And for vloggers or videographers that don't necessarily have the option to use a tripod or even a gimbal for that matter and need to handhold, your videos will be that much more usable because of the optical stabilization through the sensor, as well as the option to implement electronic stabilization. So there are two methods of stabilization that you can use independently or combine together when using it in video mode with our Z series cameras. And the Z5 is no different. We can, uh, we can utilize the IBIS and that's a real game changer for both stills and video um, people that are using this, creators, let's just say. Right. No, totally. I agree with that. Uh, I've, I've found it coming in super handy for some of the work that I've created for fun, honestly. Um, well, let's talk about come, a couple of the other features, the things that I've been curious about. Um, I'm a traveler. I love to travel. And of course, right now we're not traveling the way that we once normally would. Um, but that introduces elements that can affect your gear. So I would love to know about weather and dust resistant on the Z5. Uh, at typically at that price point, a camera may not have any kind of weather sealing, but I'd love to know with the Z5, do I have weather sealing? How protected is that gear? I'll make it simple to your customers that are watching this right now. Essentially, everything in the Z system has an element of weather sealing to it. Um, that's whether it's the lenses, the new teleconverters that we announced, as well as the bodies. Uh, this body is uh, made out of magnesium alloy, so it's got a strong chassis, but all the buttons and dials are weather sealed to the same extent of the Z6, which is actually the same extent as a D850. So the level of weather sealing here for our entry, uh, some people call it entry level, I say it entry point full frame because when you combine all the features in here, it's not really entry level. You know, I can see a professional using this camera, um, but it doesn't. Uh, uh, cheap out on the weather ceiling, let's just say. Um, so you can definitely take it out in the elements and be totally confident in that, even at this price point. So that is in the body, even the lenses as well, all of them have an element of weather ceiling uh, in the Z system. Um, the ones that are graded as S-line lenses, those, those are our kind of elite premier lenses, those have additional weather sealing into them, uh, more robust weather sealing, but every single item in the Z system has weather sealing. So for you guys in the Pacific Northwest and Seattle area on those drizzly, drizzly days, guess what? You can take this out and be okay with a few droplets, and, but we also have that gear when we know it's gonna be more torrential downpour. We still would wanna protect it no matter how much weather sealing, but knowing that you have a little bit to work with is really, really great. 
Um, one of the other features that I read about and I use um, in my cameras all the time are dual card slots. So dual SD card slots. Um, what do you see, like the Z5 offers this, I feel like in the form factor and the fact that it's full frame, is that maybe the first one in the full frame world at that price point that's offering dual SD card slots? Maybe not the yeah. first one, but maybe yeah, the first well, one for well, Nikon I or... <laughs> no, I mean, I think Nikon actually wrote the book on dual card slots. Uh, a lot of our DSLRs had that feature. When we started with this right. D system back in 2018, which was less than two years ago now, um, that was a lot of the feedback from our customer base. Um, we intentionally went with uh, the XQD card format because of the high frame rates of those cameras um, and the reliability of XQD cards and where it was going, where it is now CF Express. So that's, so that's a, another format that has the same form factor of XQD. But because of the feedback that we received from our customers and, and the fact that we were able to listen to them in a very short period of time, we came out with a Z5 that uses dual SD card slots. And that's to really uh, acknowledge the need for wedding and event photographers, for example, to have that peace of mind, that redundancy of the second card slot, the utility also of copying between cards, as well as assigning one to movies, for example. So uh, because we implemented dual SD card slots here, we're able to maintain the same form factor, same footprint, um, but also for the kind of customer that's going to be buying this, I think it's a better choice because it's readily accessible. They might be able to use existing cards um, and, you know, they're generally uh, less expensive than XQD or CF Express cards. So that's the decision we made. I think uh, our, that's really based on our customer feedback and uh, plays perfectly into people that are doing wedding and for event photography. We always hear people that said, I would get a Z6 if it just had a second card slot. So um, we've really come out with that with the Z5. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I use the dual card slots every day on my camera. And if I'm shooting an event, I probably am gonna do raw in one slot and JPEG in the other. And if I need to deliver JPEG super quick, that gives me the option to do that. Um, and for a lot of the client work, it is nice to have that redundancy raw on each card and knowing that I have an immediate backup because cards or media and you never know what might happen. So that redundancy is super helpful. Um, yeah, and I'll just take a moment to, to mention the fact that there are different ways to use the dual card slot. You can use one and then when it gets full, it'll automatically write to the other. You can do it, as you said, raw in one JPEG to the other or just have them mirror each other back to back. So it could be raw on both or raw and JPEG on both, whatever, what have you. So definitely there's a few ways to use that. Yeah, it's definitely a, a very beneficial thing. Uh, you know, I think I go back to the idea of travel and if you're, you know, in Thailand for the first time and maybe the only time you've gotten to go there and you're shooting in RAW and you have that dual card slot going and those files are being mirrored to both cards, that means you have a backup because what happens if one of those cards fail on your once in a lifetime trip? So having that immediate backup is, is super handy. Um, and again, also great for client work because um, you don't want to lose files when you're doing work for a client because then that's a whole nother problem. <laughs> yeah, um, that's, you got it. <laughs> so I read there's also a new lens and I think you have it on that camera right now. So we have a 24 to 50 millimeter F4 to 6.3 kit lens. Um, that's one of the new options available. And that thing looks super tiny, but it's got a really great range. So let's talk about that lens and the benefits of, those, of that lens. Well, it's a very practical range, the 24 to 50. Uh, we made the decision to make it an F4 to 6.3 to keep the size and weight small. But the beauty about the Z system is that it's using an electronic viewfinder. So whereas we would normally encounter a limitation in terms of a dark viewfinder, uh, if we were using an optical viewfinder on a DSLR, with a 6.3 lens, we no longer encounter that because we have such a big, beautiful, bright, crisp, electronic viewfinder. The same resolution as a Z6, as a matter of fact. Um, and we were able to overcome that. The other thing is that with the Z mount and the dimensions of it, our engineers can now develop optics that are smaller, lighter, but still very, very high performance. Um, this lens uh, on itself is uh, $399. You save $100 when you get it with a kit. But um, uh, if people have existing Z6 or Z7s out there and they might have bought it body only, now they have an option to get maybe your, your typical walk around lens, you know, just kind of a 
uh, street photography lens that's uh, just a simple, portable, versatile, but high performance zoom. So, you know, a lot of people say kit lens and that usually has a negative connotation to it. I'm looking forward to fast forwarding three months from now when all the YouTube reviews are out and they're talking about this lens because I know that the people are gonna be very pleased with the, with the quality that they're gonna get from the 24 to 50. You know, a lot of people read into the quality of the lens just by the aperture, but I think people are gonna be pleasantly surprised when they see the quality of this when it's uh, married or paired with the Z5 or Z6 or Z7 for that matter. And that's, for me, I know that's a range I love to shoot in. I do tend to be a prime girl myself, um, but that size and form factor and price point, um, it's super appealing. Like you said, street photography, I could see doing some landscape and I could also see doing some portraits with that because it really kind of hits a lot of those different genres at that range. So that's really And I'll fantastic. tell you one more application. A lot of people that just need a simple uh, B camera for video purposes, um, people that might be using it as a webcam. And I will take this moment to mention that today we announced a web, uh, Nikon webcam utility in beta form for Windows users. Um, and going forward, we're gonna support our Z cameras as well as some of our DSLRs to use it as a webcam uh, with USB connection to the computer. And that'll give you the option of, you know, shallow depth of field with what, what I'm using right now, actually to record this and changing your, you know, exposure, et cetera, et cetera, and just getting better fidelity. So uh, people that are doing video production and are looking for maybe multiple cameras, you know, you, you build a, a multiple cameras with a Z6 and you're paying me several hundred more dollars. You can save that multiplied by three if you get a Z5 uh, setup. So, uh, and as well now we have a cheaper lens to attach to those. So I think it's perfect for people that are looking for second angles for their uh, maybe three camera setup or even just a camera as a, as a webcam. So it's, 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 it's the perfect um, option for that. Yeah, I mean, I know when I look at that setup, like what you have in your hand, that's a walk around camera for me too. Um, I do a lot of photo walks in the city. When I travel, I do photo tours and having a small form factor camera and a small lens that gives me good quality images and good range is definitely a way I love to go. So we've, yeah. we've talked about how great the price point is on this camera. Tell me, what are we at? How much am I spending if I wanna get this camera? <laughs> well, if you wanna get it body only, um, typically full frame cameras, uh, even the entry level ones, uh, tend to exceed the $2,000 price point. We are introducing this now uh, at, and it'll be available end of the month at $13.99.95 body only. So there is an option if you have existing lenses out there to get body only. Um, we have also introduced a second option that will come with the 24 to 50 lens. You'll save $100 when you pair it together. So it'll be $16.99. You'll save $100 on the lens. And a third option that pairs the Z5 with the 24 to 200 millimeter lens. Um, again, saving $100, that's a kit at $21.99. Okay, so lots of range, lots of options, and that price point, $16.99 for that body and the 24 to 50 kit lens, that sounds like a pretty killer deal to me. Um, and you mentioned it, so this will be in stores towards the end of the month. Do we have an a date or just towards the end of the month is when we anticipate they'll be available? Yeah, towards the end of the month, usually okay. we have a date of August 27th and uh, we'll, we'll definitely uh, strive to shoot for that. Um, so we, we announced this on July 21st. So we're, uh, we're looking towards the end of the month for these to start shipping out in earnest. Um, yeah, so looking forward to it. Great for street photographers out there that need a small light a uh, high performance camera that full frame does, has the tilting touch screen so people can shoot from the hip if they wanted to. Um, and all the, you know, all the robust focusing features, et cetera, et cetera, that inherits from the Z6. So I just wanna drive home to customers that, that are, or people that are watching this right now that if they're looking for a very high performing full frame camera at a, at a low price point, that they the, the should really take a hard look at the Z, Z5. <laughs> You almost said C6, but you could look at that one too. I right? did. If you want to spend a little less, you could yes. get a Z5, right? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, for you guys who are watching this, if you're ready to pre-order this, and maybe you're seeing this in two months and uh, it's now available in stores, give the store a call or place your order online and um, get your name on that list to be one of the first to own this awesome new camera from Nikon. Um, our website is glazerscamera.com. 
if you have uh, any questions about the session, post those in the YouTube comments and we will work to get those answered. And also just give us a little subscribe. Uh, we are working to continually bring you content like this with our partners and vendors. Um, and uh, it's just a, also a lot of fun. Um, I wanna thank you, Mark and Joel, who's been sitting in the sidelines, just hanging out uh, for helping to facilitate and make this little session happen. I hope that all of you guys enjoyed this and got lots of information out of it. Again, if you have questions about this session, or the Nikon Z5 in general, you can post those in the comments on our YouTube video here today, or you can give the store a call and we're happy to help answer those questions. So thank you all for joining us and uh, have a great day.